that you? Pity. What? Is that you? Yes, it's me. What? Are you back? Yes. I've got your cornflakes ready. Here's your cornflakes. Are they nice? Very nice. I thought they'd be nice. You got your paper? Yes. Is it good? Not bad. What does it say? Nothing much. You read me out some nice bits yesterday. Yes, well, I haven't finished this one yet. Will you tell me when you come to something good? Yes. Have you been working hard this morning? No, just stacked a few of the old chairs. Cleaned up a bit. Is it nice out? Very nice. Is Stanley up yet? I don't know. Is he? I don't know. I haven't seen him down yet. Well, then, he can't be up. Haven't you seen him down? I've only just come in. He must be still asleep. What time did you go out this morning, Petey? The same time as usual. Was it dark? No, it was light. But sometimes you go out in the morning and it's dark. That's in the winter. Oh, in winter. Yes. It gets light later in winter. Oh. What are you reading? Someone's just had a baby. Oh, they haven't. Who? Some girl. Oh, who, Petey? Who? I don't think you'd know her. Well, what's her name? Lady Mary Splat. I don't know her. No. What is it? Uh, a girl. Not a boy? No. Oh, what a shame. I'd be sorry. I'd much rather have a little boy. A little girl's all right. I'd much rather have a little boy. I finished my cornflakes. Were they nice? Very nice. I've got something else for you. Good. Is it nice? I haven't tasted it yet. I bet you don't know what it is. Yes, I do. What is it then? Fried bread. That's right. Very nice. I knew it was. Oh, Meg. Two men came up to me on the beach last night. Two men? Yes. They wanted to know if we could put them up for a couple of nights. Put them up here? Yes. How many men? Two. And what did you say? Well, I said I didn't know. So they said they'd come round to find out. Are they coming? They said they would. Had they heard about us, Petey? They must have done. Yes, they must have done. They must have heard this was a very good boarding house. It is. This house is on the list. It is. I know it is. They might turn up today. Can you do it? Oh, I've got that lovely room they can have. You've got a room ready? I've got that room with the armchair all ready for visitors. Are you sure? Yes. So that'll be all right then if they come today. Good. I'm going to wake that boy. There's a new show coming to the palace. On the pier? No, the palace. In the town. Stanley could have been in it if it was on the pier. This is a straight show. What do you mean? No dancing or singing. Well, what do they do then? They just talk. Oh. You like a song, eh, Meg? Well, I like listening to the piano. 
I used to like watching Stanley play the piano. Of course, he didn't sing. I'm going to call that boy. Didn't you take him up his cup of tea? I always take him up his cup of tea, but that was a long time ago. Did he drink it? I made him. I stood there until he did. I'm going to call him. Stan? Stanny? Stan! I'm coming up to fetch you if you don't come down. I'm coming up. I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. I'm coming up to get you. He's coming down. I told him if he didn't hurry up, I'd get no breakfast. That did it, eh? I'll get his cornflakes. Morning, Stanley. Morning. <clears throat> so, he's come down at last, has he? He's come down at last for his breakfast. He doesn't deserve any, does he, Petey? Did you sleep well? I didn't sleep at all. Oh, you didn't sleep at all. Did you hear that, Petey? Too tired to eat your breakfast, I suppose. Now, you eat up those cornflakes like a good boy. Now, go on. What's it like out today? Very nice. Warm? Well, there's a good breeze blowing. Cold? No, no, I wouldn't say it was cold. What are the cornflakes like, Stan? Horrible. With those flakes? Those lovely flakes? You're a liar, a little liar. They're refreshing. It says so for people when they get up late. The milk's off. No, it's not. Petey ate his, didn't you, Petey? That's right. There you are, then. All right, I'll go on to the second course. He hasn't finished the first course, and he wants to go on to the second course. I feel like something cooked. Well, I'm not going to give it to you. Give it to him. I'm not going to. No breakfast. All night long I've been dreaming about this breakfast. I thought you said you didn't sleep. Daydreaming all night long, and now she won't give me any. There's not even a crust of bread on the table. Well, I can see I'll have to go down at one of those smart hotels on the front. Well, you won't get a better breakfast there than here. Here you are. You'll like this. What's this? Fried bread. I bet you don't know what it is. Oh, yes, I do. What? Fried bread. He knew. What a wonderful surprise. You didn't expect that, did you? I bloody well didn't. Well, I'm off. Are you going back to work? Yes. Oh, your tea. You haven't had your tea. That's all right. No time now. I've got it made inside. No, no, never mind. Uh, see you later. Ta-da, Stan. Ta-da. What do you mean? You're a bad wife. I'm not. Who said I am? Not to make your husband a cup of tea terrible. He knows I'm not a bad wife. Giving him sour milk instead. It wasn't sour. Disgraceful. You mind your own business anyway. You won't find many better wives than me, I can tell you. I keep a very nice house and I keep it clean. Whoa. Yes. 
Um, this house is very well known for a very good boarding house for visitors. Visitors? Do you know how many visitors you've had since I've been here? How many? One. Who? Me. I'm your visitor. Yeah, you're a liar. This house is on the list. I bet it is. I know it is. Was it nice? What? The fried bread. Succulent. Oh, you shouldn't say that word. What word? That word you said. What, succulent? Now don't say it. What's the matter with it? You shouldn't say that word to a married woman. Is that a fact? Yes. Well, I never knew that. Well, it's true. Who told you that? Never you mind. Well, if I can't say it to a married woman, who can I say it to? You're bad. What about some tea? Do you want some tea? Say please. Please. Say sorry first. Sorry first. No, just sorry. Just sorry. Oh, you deserve the stress. Don't do that! I brought the pot in. But then what I'd do without you? You don't deserve it, though. Why not? Go on. Calling me that. How long's that tea been in the pot? That's good, strong tea. This isn't tea, it's gravy. No, it's not. Get out of it, you succulent old washing bag. I am not. And it isn't your place to tell me if I am. And it isn't your place to come into a man's bedroom and wake him up. Oh, Stanley. Don't you like your cup of tea of a morning, the one I bring you? I can't drink this muck. Didn't anyone ever tell you to warm the pot at least? That's good, strong tea, that's all. Oh, God, I'm tired. <sighs> Not the bloody table! Stan. What? Am I really succulent? Oh, you are. I'd rather have you than a cold in the nose any day. No, you're just saying that. Look, why don't you get this place cleared up? It's a pigsty! And another thing, what about my room? It needs sweeping, it needs papering. I need a new room. Oh, Stan, that's a lovely room. I've had some lovely afternoons in that room. <laughs> Shining. What are you smoking? A cigarette. Are you going to give me one? No. I like cigarettes. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Get away from me. Are you going out? Not with you. But I'm going shopping in a minute. Go. You'll be lonely all by yourself. Will I? Without your own Meg. I've got to get things in for the two gentlemen. What two gentlemen? I'm expecting visitors. What? You didn't know that, did you? What are you talking about? Two gentlemen asked Petey if they could come and stay for a couple of nights. I'm expecting them. I don't believe it. It's true. You're saying it on purpose. Petey told me this morning. When was this? When did he see them? Last night. Who are they? I don't know. Didn't he tell you their names? No. Here? They wanted to come here? Yes, they did. Why? This house is on the list. But who are they? You'll see when they come. They won't come. Why not? I tell you, they won't come. Why don't they come last night if they were coming? Well, perhaps they couldn't find the place in the dark. They won't It's come. not easy to find in the dark. Someone's taking the Michael. Forget all about it. It's a false alarm. False alarm. Where's my tea? I took it away. You didn't want it. What do you mean, you took it away? I took it away. What did you take it away for? You didn't want it. Who said I didn't want it? You did. Who gave you the right to take away my tea? You wouldn't drink it. 
Who do you think you are talking to? What? Come here. What do you mean? Come over here. No. I want to ask you something. Come on. All right. I can ask it from here just as well. Tell me, Mrs. Bowles, when you address yourself to me, do you ever ask yourself who exactly you are talking to? Hey? Didn't you enjoy your breakfast, Tam? Stan, when are you going to play the piano again like you used to? No. I used to like watching you play the piano. When are you going to play it again? I can't, can I? Why not? I haven't got a piano, have I? No, I meant like when you were working, that piano. Go and do your shopping. But you wouldn't have to go away if you got a job, would you? You could play the piano on the pier. I've, um been offered a job, as a matter of fact. What? Yes, I'm considering a job at the moment. You're not? A good one, too. A nightclub in Berlin. Berlin? Berlin, a nightclub, playing the piano. A fabulous salary and all found. How long for? We don't stay in Berlin. Then we go to Athens. How long for? Yes, then we pay a flying visit to, what's his name? Where? Constantinople, Zagreb, Vladivostok. It's a round-the-world tour. Have you played the piano in those places before? I played the piano? I played the piano all over the world, all over the country. I once gave a concert. A concert? Yes. A good one, too. They were all there that night. Every single one of them. It was a great success. Yes, a concert. At Lower Edmonton. What did you wear? I had a unique touch. Absolutely unique. They came up to me. They came up to me, said they were grateful. Champagne. We had that night the lot. My father nearly came down to wear me. Well, I dropped him a card anyway. But I don't think he could make it. No. I lost the address, that was it. Yes. Lower Edmonton. Then after that, you know what they did? They carved me up, carved me up. It's all arranged, it was all worked out. My next concert, somewhere else it was, in winter. I went down there to play. Then when I got there, the hall was closed. The place was shuttered up. Not even a caretaker. They'd locked it up. Fast one. They pulled a fast one. I'd like to know who was responsible for that. All right, Jack, I can take a tip. They want me to crawl down on my bended knees. Well, I can take a tip any day of the week. Look at her. You're just an old piece of rock cake, aren't you? That's what you are, aren't you? Don't you go away again, Stan. You stay here. You'll be better off. You stay with your old maid. Aren't you feeling well this morning, Stan? Did you pay a visit this morning? Meg, you know what? What? Have you heard the latest? No. I bet you have. I haven't. Shall I tell you? What latest? You haven't heard it? No. They're coming today. They're coming in a van. Who? You know what they've got in that van? What? They've got a wheelbarrow in that van. They haven't. Oh, yes, they have. You're a liar. A big wheelbarrow. And when the van stops, they wheel it out, and then they wheel it up the garden path, and then they knock at the front door. No, they don't. They're looking for someone. 
They're not. They're looking for someone, a certain person. No, they're not. Shall I tell you who they're looking for? Uh, no! You don't want me to tell you? You're a liar! That's a bulky object. You're not to touch it. Why would I want to touch it? Well, you're not to anyway. Why don't you open the door? It's all stuffy in here. Stuffy? I disinfected the place this morning. Oh, that's better. I think it's going to rain today. What do you think? I hope so. You could do with it. Me? I was in the sea at half past six. Were you? I went right out of the headland and back before breakfast. Don't you believe me? Do you want to have a look at your face? You could do with a shave. You know that. Don't you ever go out? I mean, what do you do? Just sit around the house like this all day long? Mrs. Bowles got enough to do without having you under feet all day long. I always stand on the table when she sweeps the floor. Why don't you have a wash? You look terrible. A wash wouldn't make any difference. Come out and get a bit of air. You'd have pressed me looking like that. Yeah, oh, I don't know about that. It's lovely out, and I've got a few sandwiches. What sort of sandwiches? Cheese. I'm a big eater, you know. It's all right, I'm not hungry. How would you like to go away with me? Where? Nowhere, still we could go. But where could we go? Nowhere. There's nowhere to go. So we could just go. It wouldn't matter. We may as well just stay here. No, it's no good here. But where else is there? Nowhere. Well, that's a charming proposal. Do you have to wear those glasses? Yes. So you're not coming out for a walk? I can't at the moment. You're a bit of a washout, aren't you? Is this it? This is it. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. And what now? Don't worry yourself, McCann. Take a seat. And what about you? What about me? Are you going to take a seat? We'll both take a seat. Sit back, McCann. Relax. What's the matter with you? I'll bring you down for a few days to the seaside. Take a holiday. Do yourself a favour. Learn to relax, McCann, or you will never get anywhere. Oh, sure, I do try not. The secret is breathing. Take my tip. It's a well-known fact. Breathe in, breathe out. Take a chance, let yourself go. What can you lose? Look at me. 
When I was an apprentice yet, McCann, every second Friday of the month, my Uncle Barney used to take me to the seaside, regular as clockwork. Brighton, Canvey Island, Rottingdean, Uncle Barney wasn't particular. After lunch on Shabbos, we'd go and sit in a couple of deck chairs. You know, the ones with canopies. We'd have a little paddle. We'd watch the tide coming in, going out, the sun coming down. Golden days, believe me, McCann. <laughs> Uncle Barney. Of course, he was an impeccable dresser, one of the old school. He had a house just outside Basingstoke at the time, respected by the whole community. Culture? Don't talk to me about culture. He was an all-round man, what do you mean? He, he was a cosmopolitan. Hey, Nat. Yes, one of the old school. Nat, how do we know this is the right house? What? How do we know this is the right house? What makes you think it's the wrong house? I didn't see a number on the gate. I wasn't looking for a number. No? You know one thing Uncle Barney taught me? Uncle Barney taught me that the word of a gentleman is enough. That's why when I had to go away on business, I never carried any money. One of my sons used to come with me. He used to carry a few coppers for a paper, perhaps, to see how the MCC was getting on overseas. Otherwise, my name was good. Besides, I was a very busy man. What about this, Nat? Isn't it about time someone came in? McCann, what are you so nervous about? Pull yourself together. Everywhere you go these days, it's like a funeral. Mm, that's true. True? Of course it's true. It's more than true. It's a fact. Mm, you may be right. What is it, McCann? You don't trust me like you did in the old days? Oh, sure, I trust you, Nat. Then why is it that before you do a job, you're all over the place? When you're doing the job, you're as cool as a whistle. I don't know, Nat. I'm just all right. Once I know what I'm doing, when I know what I'm doing, I'm all right. Well, you do it very well. Oh, thank you, Nat. You know what I said when this job came up? I mean, naturally, they approached me to take care of it. And you know who I asked for? Who? You. Oh, that was very good of you, Nat. No, it was nothing. You're a capable man, McCann. Well, that's a great compliment, Nat, coming from a man in your position. Well, I've got a position, I won't deny well, it. You certainly have. I would never deny that I had a position. And what a position? It's not a thing I would deny. Yes, it's true. You've done a lot for me. I appreciate it. Say no more. You've always been a true Christian. In a way. No, I just thought I'd tell you that I appreciate it's it. It's unnecessary to recapitulate. Yeah, you're right there. Quite unnecessary. You're not just one thing. What now? This job. Ah. No, listen, this job. Is it going to be like anything we've ever done before? Now, just tell me that, just that, and I won't ask any more. The main issue is a singular issue, and quite distinct from your previous work. Certain elements, however, might well approximate in points of procedure to some of your other activities. All is dependent on the attitude of our subject. At all events, McCann, I can assure you the assignment will be carried out and the mission accomplished with no excessive aggravation to you or myself. Satisfied? Sure. Thank you, Nat. <coughs> ah, Mrs. Bowles? Yes? We spoke to your husband last night. P perhaps he mentioned us? We heard that you kindly let rooms for gentlemen, so, uh, so I brought my friend along with me. We were after a nice place, you understand, so we came to you. I'm Mr. Gilberg, and this is Mr. McCann. Uh, very pleased to meet you. We're pleased to meet you, too. That's very nice. You're right. How often do you meet someone it's a pleasure to meet? Never. But today it's different. How are you keeping, Mrs. Bowles? Oh, uh, very well, thank you. Yes, really? Oh, yes, really. I'm glad. Well, so what do you say? You could manage to put us up, eh, Mrs. Bowles? Well, it would have been easier last week. It would, eh? Yes. Uh, why? H how many you got here at the moment? Just one at the moment. Just one? Yes, just one. Until you came. And your husband, of course. Yes, but he sleeps with me. What does he do, your